Heads up, a major storm is brewing in the tropics, but it could go down in two very different ways. We're gonna take a look at both scenarios today. And on top of that, I'm gonna give an update on the severe weather. You're not gonna wanna miss this. We're gonna have all that and more in today's no hype banger forecast. And it starts right now. Hey, what's up guys? Meteorologist Stormcat5. We are gonna be taking an in-depth look into the tropics in this special video. We're gonna take a look at that system that's brewing out in the Atlantic. We're also gonna take a look at what the weather is like today, tomorrow, and the next couple of days. Also, one thing to point out on the visible satellite, check this out, down in Florida, we had almost a foot of rain that fell with a little bit of a tropical system that's forming off the coast. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal at all. I mean, look at this. These are the rain totals this morning from that system. It dropped close to a foot of rain on Sanibel Island in Southwest Florida. Are you kidding me? All right, let's get to the tropics right now because this is what our current system looks like in the Atlantic Basin right now. It has just moved off the African coast and it is now starting to meander into the MDR, the main development region where a lot of systems normally form. Now if we take a closer look at 97L right now, it doesn't really have its act together at all, but it's just moved off the African coast and you do see some showers and storms already starting to bubble here and there's a little bit of a spin, just a little bit, just enough to be concerning. And the National Hurricane Center has designated this thing, it's right now called 97L. When this thing does become a system, it will be called Aaron. But the big question is, where does this thing go and how strong does it get? Let's first start by taking a look at the potential track. Where is this thing gonna go? and then we'll take a look at the intensity. So there are two different scenarios that are very apparent if you look at all of the models. Scenario one here is this thing continues moving to the north and west, gets to the Lesser Antilles. This is your decision point right when it gets there. It's either gonna start taking a hard north turn or it's gonna to continue toward the mainland US. And those are your two different scenarios. So scenario one, you've got this high pressure centered in the Atlantic, and maybe it's a little bit weaker. So our storm starts to take a hard north turn and eventually it goes to the north and east. And that would be fantastic news. That would just piss some fish off and be great. That's scenario one. Scenario two, maybe our high pressure is a little bit further to the south or is a little bit stronger. That will then steer our storm closer to the coast. So watch, scenario two would take a similar track to scenario one. But then once it got to the Lesser Antilles, if that high pressure was further to the south, it would then continue moving to the west and would head right towards the United States. And at that point, potential impacts from Florida all the way up the east coast would be possible. And if we look at the latest spaghetti models, they have this thing doing exactly how I just mentioned. It's gonna get to the Lesser Antilles, right to the north of the Lesser Antilles, and then it's gonna start diverging. That's when your decision point is. And if we look, and if we look at the latest GEFS track, which is the American Ensemble model, so it's run about 25 different times, it tells a very similar story. It takes a hard north turn, starts moving to the west, and then eventually starts to turn north. Where that northern turn happens, will have significant impacts on the forecast. Notice in this model, you got scenario one right here, very apparent with several of the models. You also have scenario two though, very apparent with several of the models. So it is way too early to rule this thing out by any means. And this graphic is from Jim Eds. This was Hurricane Irma's track. And this is a pretty sobering reminder here that we just don't fully know at this point where this thing is going to go. This was Hurricane Irma back in 2017 and Hurricane Irma took a similar track to this. Notice how it had that jog to the north right in there, just like we're predicting with future storm Aaron. And we all know what Irma did eventually in Florida. I'm not telling you this is gonna be another Irma, but what I am telling you, it is certainly in the realm of possibility, but we also could be completely fine and scenario one could happen and we would have no impacts. All right, now let's look at the intensity of this thing because we've got a general idea about where this is gonna go. And this is why we need to watch this because basically all of the models, except for like two or three. And these are hurricane specialized models. A lot of these have this thing becoming at least a category one hurricane. So we are likely to see our first hurricane of the year in the Atlantic basin. We're gonna have to watch this thing very closely. All right, now let's look at timing and when are we gonna have to worry about this thing? Well, it's just moved off the African coastline. If we go into next week, this is by about Wednesday. We're likely looking at this thing in the central Atlantic here. And as we go into Thursday, tight, pretty tight track here, guys. So it's gonna be near the Lesser Antilles 
by Thursday going into Friday. And that's when your decision point's going to happen sometime during the day on Friday. We could be looking at a hurricane by then. Then as we go into Saturday, August 16th, Sunday, August 17th, that's when we're going to be starting need to watch this thing. So about a week from today is when this thing is going to be getting potentially close to the U.S. going into Monday as well. And it's very apparent if you look on the European ensemble here, two, our two scenarios that we talked about are very much in play. This is scenario two. This is the bad scenario for the United States where we likely would see some sort of land impact, but a lot of the models. I would say the majority of the models at this point have this thing recurving and being a fish storm and piss some fish off. And it would continue following that track and would not be a problem at all. And this is pretty cool because this is actually a comparison between the European and the GFS. Look, I drew the American flag. And this is a side-by-side -side view. So it shows you kind of the differences here. Now, if we look at zero Z, let's go last night, what the models were saying over the next couple of days, neither of these have it developing very significantly. So I do think it will actually struggle to develop in the MDR, the main development region. But by the time we hit Saturday, that's when this thing is likely to explode and potentially become a hurricane. Both models have it becoming a closed low. And then watch as we go throughout the next couple of days here. This is Sunday, this is Monday. Have this thing absolutely bomb out. Look at the track guys, both the GFS and the European, at least last night, were agreeing that scenario one was likely going to happen here, which would be fantastic news. Now the one caveat I would say to all of this is with tropical systems, guys, they sometimes can have a mind of their own. Our models are very good at handling track, but intensity wise, guys, they're just not. And so this is one of the hurricane models here. And the big takeaway from this is this actually has this storm getting organized quickly and becoming a hurricane by Wednesday. And look how organized this thing looks. Are you kidding me? That actually has it becoming a major hurricane by Thursday. And so the reason why I show you this is to tell you that if this thing does become stronger, quicker, it likely will have significant impacts on the forecast and could actually make it go north sooner. Bottom line, guys, if you live along the East Coast all the way down into the Gulf Coast, just start paying more attention. It's not time to freak out or panic by any means. When it's time to do that, I'll tell you. Don't worry. I got you, baby. I'll let you know. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Lastly, I do want to mention we could get some severe weather today in portions of the United States. We've got this slight risk. That is a two out of five risk centered in Colorado and Nebraska. Wow, what a terrible two and a terrible five. The main threats are going to be wind, but a tornado cannot be ruled ruled out by any means, especially here right along the mountain ranges, right along the Rockies from Denver, all the way down through Colorado Springs and Pueblo. But after today, we are looking to calm down in a major way, severe weather-wise. This is Monday, marginal, one out of five, very small, centered in Lubbock and Amarillo. Same thing with Tuesday. Look at this. We got no outline of severe weather. So while the tropics are heating up, severe weather, at least in the short term, is trending down in a major way. All right, I'll take it. And we look at the future radar for the next 24 to 48 hours here. A couple of trouble spots that are apparent. One, we've got some decaying showers in Iowa that should dissipate as we go in the evening hours, but we are going to see a reinvigoration of those going into the night tonight. And then also trouble spot number two out here in Denver and New Mexico, our Denver, Colorado brethren. You guys are going to get severe storms today. Third trouble spot is down here in the southeast along the Gulf Coast and along the Atlantic where that little disturbance is starting to spin up a lot of moisture. So one, two, three today. If we look at our Colorado and New Mexico brethren, storms will fire this evening, push off the mountains. That's when you'll have the best chance to see possibly a tornado or two by about 6 to 7 p.m. Central. And then going down to our Florida brethren, check this out, our Southeast, a lot of rain's going to fall the next day or two. A continued rain for Florida Big time flooding problems down there from the Gulf Coast all the way up into Tallahassee. And then going into tomorrow, those flooding concerns continue, except they move a little bit further to the north from New Orleans all the way to the panhandle of Florida. And then our Midwest brethren could get hit with a couple of rounds of storms. One today for our Chicago and Illinois and Wisconsin brethren. Wisconsin. And then our Kansas brethren also are going to get absolutely shellacked today. Are you kidding me? And then going into tomorrow, we could have another round of showers and storms that moves through Midwest. Minnesota and the Dakotas, but it should not be severe. And then tomorrow, our Texas and Oklahoma brethren 
are going to get in on potentially on that storm action going into tomorrow night. Showers and storms are likely marginally severe, but I'm telling you, the biggest risk is probably wind, maybe some lightning and some small hail. We're not talking about a tornado outbreak by any means. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Summer is making a huge return. The next six to 10 days are going to be hot, sticky, downright moist. For basically everyone east of the Rockies, from Maine all the way to Montana, we are gonna be baking. And unfortunately with that heat, we also are going to have the moistness return in a major way. These are our dew points for the next couple of days. Notice we've got 70s close to 80 down here in New Orleans. Anywhere you see this like purplish, bluish color right here, that is above 70 and that is completely chalked, completely moist. Oh, I'm so sorry, Eastern brethren, but I'm right there with you. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for joining me on this jam-packed forecast. And if you like what you saw, please smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. And please leave a comment below. I read them all. Thanks for joining me today. Find someone, tell them you love them, tell them you care about them, do something nice for someone today. This is Stormcat5, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh my God, my pen!